What's going on guys? My name is Brennan Myers. This is the 30 for 30 series and let's jump right in. They got problems on problems on problems on problems on problems on problems I solve them. I run through the money, the pressure be calling. Left on my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm garbage. I'm going through something. That's why I ain't calling. Phone and progression is all that I wanted. All right, so for today we have back and biceps. We're going to be hitting it hard. All you're really going to need is potentially a pull-up bar in the doorway. If you want to use a table for inverted rows and things like that, you can. If you can't do any type of pull-ups, then just go ahead and do different movements that we've already completed in other videos. No problem. Now, every morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we release a new video. If we don't release that workout for that day, it's just a rest of recovery day, so don't worry. Now, before we jump in, I want to give you a few tips you could be following, so let's get started. All right, quick tip number one. Each rep needs to be a controlled movement. Don't go too fast. That's exactly how you miss the effectiveness of the exercise. Number two, I suggest looking up rotator cuff warm-up exercises before you get started with this workout. I like to complete them before any upper body day. Number three, don't skip leg day. When training lower body, your body has to work the hardest. This can translate to an increase in hormone production. Number four, I'm geeked up on the low stim pre-workout from Create You. Link is always in the bio. Coming soon. Number five, I used to be extremely insecure with being so skinny. I now understand that the process of building muscle and size takes time and it's okay to be discouraged. Number six, and last, rest periods today should be around the 90 second mark between sets. You may shorten them if you'd like. Let's roll. All right, here we go. We're gonna get started with a chair assisted pull up. So I'm here in my garage. You can be in your doorway, that's completely fine. Now, a pull up position means that our hands are gonna be just outside of shoulder width apart. It's not a wide grip pull up, it's not a close grip pull up, okay? Just outside of shoulder width apart. Now, our feet, <clears throat> you can use any type of level chair depending on your advancement level. So if you're a little bit stronger and you can increase performance or whatever by lowering the chair and making it harder for yourself, that's completely fine. If you're a little bit more beginner and you need to bring a, a chair that's a little bit higher, that's fine as well, okay? So in this position, we're actually going to be under the bar as so, okay? Now from this position, we're going to rotate backwards or actually just think about extending at your shoulders so you're here in this position. You are going to feel your lats on like crazy, keeping those elbows extended as much as possible. So here, keeping that chin tucked, boom, here, all right? Now all you're gonna do is pull this way towards your lips and your chin and right back down, out, here, okay? Right back in and right back out, here. You're gonna see how effective this exercise really is and how much more difficult you can make it according to the hand positioning and everything that you could try out. All right, we have a superset here. We have pushaways on the floor going into inverted rows. Now, I have these two pieces of, uh, I don't even know what you call them, what is it? Paper towel. Paper towels. And <laughs> you can use a, a cloth, you can use whatever makes it easiest for you. I don't even know if this is really gonna work for me, to be honest, I'm just a very, very heavy man right now <laughs> from bulking. It is, I'm just kidding. All right, <clears throat> so what you're gonna do is squeezing your abs into the ground so there's no room at the bottom, okay? Now, keeping that chin tucked, as you have seen in previous workouts, we're gonna be coming up in this position right here, okay? Now, this is where it gets really, really difficult. From this position, you're going to slide out and slide back in, okay? Slide out, not too far out. You don't wanna feel your shoulder and slide back in. It's absolutely brutal. And then we're gonna move straight into an inverted row. Now with these inverted rows, you can really place your hands in, in different positions. I like to grab onto the, the table. If you have two P-bars and you can utilize those, great. I think they're like 70 bucks on Amazon. Um, it can be pretty expensive depending on, on your financial situation. But we want to lay under here, okay? Now with these inverter rows, it's going to be a little bit different. Sorry for my computer plugs and everything. It's going to be a little bit different here. So I want to make sure that I'm resetting each time. So I'm going to retract and depress my scaps. Notice how they're not here. It's here. It's almost like a big, big chest, all right? And I'm going to come up to the bottom of my chest and then come back down and reset. They come back up and reset. And even if you want, I do suggest to make it a little bit harder, pause up top and then come right back down. Pause up top, come right back down 
and that is your superset. All right, here we go. So I am sitting on the floor, and we're gonna be going from inverted pronated headbangers into three-point holes for pull-ups, okay? So in this position, I want you to have your feet on the ground, tuck in your stomach. I don't wanna round your back and fully um, extend your neck, or flex, sorry, flex your neck. We don't want any of that. So we're gonna keep everything tucked and in a straight line and squeeze, okay? Now, I do want you to retract and depress your scaps as so. Now watch really, really closely. Retract and depress. So it's almost like coming down and I'm in a straight position, okay? Now, because we are in an inverted position, you are going to have to find a, a, a good medium in between not too low and not too high so that you're stabilizing more efficiently. Now, if you don't have a regular bar right here, like a, any type of a dip station or anything like that, try and use a countertop. If you don't have a countertop and it doesn't work like that, then go ahead and use a table. If you don't have that, try a different exercise, okay? So we're going to be coming in this position here, keeping our butt off of the ground. We're going to come up here, okay, squeezing everything, and we're gonna come out until we're all the way out, and then come right back in. All the way out, notice how I'm dropping, and then right back in. All the way up, dropping, right back in, okay? From here, I want you to go straight into these pull-up position movement. So, <clears throat> hands are shoulder width apart, okay? And we're gonna, all we're gonna be doing is holding at each position. Now, at the bottom, it's most important that you're not doing this incorrectly. We don't wanna just be hanging in this position for 10 seconds. We want to retract and depress our scaps and stabilize using our scaps, okay? But we are gonna be starting from the top of the movement. So, you're simply going to be holding here 10 seconds. You don't need a bench, okay? If you're more beginner, you can use a bench. So pause here 10 seconds. Pause here 10 seconds, about 90 degree angle of that elbow joint, and then 10 seconds here, just slightly bending those elbows, here flexing those elbows, and that is your superset. All right, superset, we have counter rows, single arm, going to pull downs on the floor. Now, the, these both these techniques are extremely unique, but if you get it correctly, you will feel it in the right places. So, counter pulls or counter rows, whatever you wanna call them, okay? We're gonna be in a position where we're, we're fully straight up, okay? The counter's right in front of us. We're gonna to be to the side of it. So it's gonna be single arm, right? So, we're gonna be here, and all we're gonna do is bend at our hips. Right when you bend at your hips, and you're at about 45 degrees bent at this position, you're going to grab here on the counter. Now, I want you to back away and make sure you're at the edge of the counter so you're able to pull as much as you can, all right? Now, you want to not put your hand here unless you feel like it's a little more comfortable for yourself and you're not using it at all. But what I want you to do, keeping that butt squeezing and pushed back as much as possible here, I want you to retract and depress this scap and then start pulling and walking your feet. Look at my feet, walking your feet towards here at this position all the way up until about below the nipple line or below your chest here, as you can see. And then you're gonna come right back out, reset. Okay, so again, you're gonna be here in this position, to squeeze, boom, and then reset. Now, with these single arm pulls, it's gonna be very, very unique with this movement, okay? So, one arm is gonna basically be stabilizing you in a position. You wanna squeeze everything. This is like a Superman position, okay? Your hands, I want you to go a little bit further out. So almost like everything's straight, completely straight from head to toe, and then boom, that's the position that I want you to be in. I don't even know how to direct it too well because I'm on the floor right now, but it's about 30 degrees um, out to the right and to the left, okay? We're gonna be using my right side to pull here, okay? So what you're gonna do is squeezing your abs as much as possible. You're gonna notice that your hips and everything are gonna wanna move like crazy. We don't want that. Put socks on your feet so you're not burning anything and watch this very, very closely. So stabilization here, okay? And you're gonna be pulling to the right as much as possible and then resetting, okay? Then you can go to the left, pulling as much as possible and all the way back down. Now, I want you to notice something very, very clear, okay? When I'm up here in this position, this arm is, is pretty much straight, but also I'm not here, okay? I'm not ex overextending any part of my spine or my back. I am squeezing everything in and tight as much as possible. So that is your superset. All right, we have headbangers. Now you can use a chair or something to stabilize if you're a little bit more of a beginner. If you're advanced, if you're intermediate, you're most likely going to be able to do this movement. Now, the key to this is that if you're in one of those door pull-up bars, you don't wanna to go too far out or like, or like really bang too hard at the top. 
because the, uh, the pull-up bar will get a little shaky and it might even break. So viewer discretion is advised if I fall on my face. So <laughs> what you're gonna do is your hands are gonna be just within, or just about shoulder width apart, as you can see here, okay? Now you can come a little bit further in if you wanna stabilize a little bit more with your biceps. I am gonna actually do that on this, but generally I say about shoulder width apart and keeping your elbows tucked. The most important part is keeping those elbows tucked. The more that they are here in this internal rotation of the shoulders, here, this internal rotation, the more it's in that positioning, you're actually gonna put more strain on your shoulders and then also put strain on the muscles that you're not even really wanting to be working in this movement. It's a lot more bicep isolated, but I am gonna come a little bit in further, okay? Now, I'm gonna be just coming straight out and back in. Now, the main thing here is that I don't wanna fully, fully extend as so. I just wanna come out to, I would say about 105 degrees, okay? 130 degrees at this position here, and then coming right back in, making sure that I'm not just reaching with my head the whole time. I'm keeping everything tucked, right? So, it'll be in this position, boom. Boom, boom. And you'll notice that it's shaking a bunch because I don't have a lot of weight on there. So that's why I recommend sometimes using the chair and such, but that is your set. All right, last set. If you don't feel like this is working, then you're not doing it correctly, trust me. It's very important that we stay focused on the technique of the concentrated curl. The reason being is because we don't have a weight, we don't have a lot of stuff to really utilize to put a lot of concentration on that bicep except for our own resistance. So one resistance on the left hand or the right hand side is going to really create the entire movement for yourself as well as proper positioning as you're coming up, okay? So a concentrated curl, now you can do many different types of concentrated curl. All it means is you're concentrating on that curl movement and really making sure you're isolating that bicep. So you're gonna notice that I'm bending over here and I'm almost externally rotating at the hip to open up this, this body or this side a little bit more so I have room to be able to curl, okay? Now, you wanna bend over as much as possible, but keep everything tucked. The more you keep everything tucked and stabilized with the shoulder in here, the more your bicep is gonna work throughout the entire movement, okay? So, we're gonna be here in this position. Now, this hand is gonna come down, and really, if you can find it at, your, at the hand, great. If you wanna grab your wrist because you have a little bit longer arms or whatever, that's completely fine as well, okay? But the most important thing is you're gonna be coming up and trying to touch your pinky to your shoulder and then coming right back down in this position, okay? So, you're externally rotating, coming back down into internal rotation. Externally rotating, back down into internal rotation. Not too much of that internal rotation though. We don't wanna hurt your shoulder at all, okay? So from this position, we're gonna squeeze and we're gonna be coming up while we're turning all the way up into this position and right back down. Now, if you wanna come a little bit higher on your leg as well with your elbow, just above the elbow, the point of your elbow, that's completely fine. And coming here, <clears throat> you actually might like that a little bit better, and that is your set. All right guys, so there you have it. That is your 30 for 30 workout. Remember, we're coming back every single morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If it's not posted, it's a rest of recovery day. Now I do wanna try and move over to the park as the quarantine kind of lifts for COVID-19 and everything that's kind of happening. Um, but until then, we're gonna kind of share going in the home, going in the house, and then also going to the park so you can see kind of different workouts, exercise that you could be utilizing. Now just make sure you're following your diet and you're staying on point with your sleep sleep and the water. I drink at least a gallon every single day. I'm sleeping eight and a half to nine hours every night, but I'm also getting my work done. And I do this by scheduling things. Use things like Microsoft To Do, Wonderlist. Wonderlist is actually about to go and expire and, and they're getting rid of that company, but Microsoft To Do is a great, great way and tool to schedule and organize things. You can also use Google Calendar. I do block scheduling, so I know I have this much time for calls each day. I know I have this much time to be able to work out. I have this much time for rehab and I, so on and so forth. I also find time for myself. So if I wanna watch a little bit of Netflix, if I wanna go for a walk, I make sure it happens. Also, if you are taking a lot of caffeine, it's very important that you're not overloading. If you're taking 400 milligrams of caffeine every single day, just imagine how your body is going to feel and it's going to be affected long term. Your adrenals are going to be shot. They're exhausted. How are they supposed to work if it's always pumping as much energy as possible into them? You're going to just be stressed and that's why maybe you have more anxiety during this time. Maybe you feel more stressed. Maybe you don't want to do the same things that you used to do. So keep these things in mind as you're progressing with your workouts, with your new nutrition and with your physique, with your body and your mind. It's a whole thing. It's everything is encompassed into one. Mind, 
body connection. Let's go. Anyways, thanks for tuning in for this video. Let me know how you feel about the workouts, feedback. Send me a message on Instagram right here at the B Myers. Um, I'm Brennan, and I'll see you next time. Peace.